Hey, Dr. Tasha fam. So every day I get questions about yeesh, yeesh, yeesh. I got a bunch of questions and we'll address a bunch of them this week. I'm feeling like the posting spirit is heavy on my heart. So I get a bunch of questions a lot about yeast and why yeast and why I keep getting yeast and why is it recurring and the medication is not working and blah, 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 blah. Well, a couple of different things. First of all, yeast really is a function of what you are putting in your body. Um, let's be very clear on that. Now, there are a bunch of different types of yeast. Everybody gets fluconazole. I don't understand the doctors who are like, go get some honest that. That don't work. But anyway, um, so you have a candida albicans, which is the most common, doesn't mean anything to you. And then we have a candida glabrata, um, which they have two different treatments. Um, and they're both they're both yeast, but they're different types of yeast. So, you know, you want to make sure you're saying to your doctor, what type of yeast do I have? If they look at you crazy, that means they don't know. Um, and that should be a little bit of a red flag for you. Um, but when it comes to treatment for yeast, I get patients who obviously I treat with the fluconazole. I'm a little unconventional, so I'll usually get two pills, not to take at the same time, but I'll say take one, skip a day, take a second pill. Um, but at the end of the day, when I get somebody who's like, okay, I'm constantly getting this yeast, a couple of things go off in my mind. And I take a look for, um, I do something called a hemoglobin A1C, meaning do you, are, do you, are you pre-diabetic? Um, are you diabetic? Because recurrent yeast infections could be a presenting sign of diabetes. Um, once I've treated you, I know what kind of yeast you have, whether it's the albicans or the glabrata or the sakachi or whatever different kind of yeast you may or may not have. Once I know what you have and I'm treating you, then I start to look at things like your diet. If you're taking in a lot of carbohydrates, because what does yeast eat? Sugar. So if you're taking in a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of sugars, a lot of snacks, a lot of sugary beverages, wine, um, cocktails, things like that, I tell my patients, decrease that and increase your water intake. Um, obviously, I treat you with whatever medication is necessary, but I'm like, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. And on top of hydration, um, I usually will recommend um, for an overgrowth of yeast, apple cider vinegar. If you are not somebody who can tolerate um, the actual medication, then, or excuse me, not medication, the liquid apple cider vinegar, then you might do well with apple cider vinegar capsules. You can get them from any health food store. You can get them from Whole Foods. You can get them from Amazon, probably even Target or Walmart. Um, but certainly that is what I recommend for my patients. So I will try and go um, as holistic as possible. Um, but of course, I still treat you conventionally. So um, if you notice that you're getting a recurrence of yeast and you're sick of going to the doctor about it, um, Monastet, uh, likely not to work too well. Um, but again, watch your diet, change the things that you're eating. Um, increase your water, especially alkaline water. I'm big, 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 big on alkaline water and the benefits of alkaline water. And then also apple cider vinegar capsules. All right. I hope this helps somebody.